Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, today we will discuss about sorting in query processing. Now what do you mean by sorting? That means we will sort the data on the query based on a sorted relation. Now we will discuss about the importance of sorting in query processing, the sorting merge algorithm that is an external sort merge algorithm and finally we will measure the sorting cost in this query processing. Now sorting is becoming absolutely important in not only the query processing but also in the query optimization and evaluation. Now as we have the sorted data in the relation then we can have the sorted output on the query as a result and also the query processing will have the sorted data that will enhance the search on this query that the search on the scans or the search of the comparisons or any complex operations. So that is why we need to sort the data for the query processing beforehand on the evaluation part that will execution engine will happen. Now what is happening on the sorting? The sorting on this query processing or a particular query can be done in two on the levels, one is logically, another is physically. Now when we are having the logical sorting on the query, then actually we are having that we are have already the sorted result and then we are actually fetching the query from the sorted result. But as this thinking that we already have a sorted relation will incur an extra overhead of cost if the relation is not in a sorted one. So rather we stick to the physical sorting that will again make the sorted result on the relation and then fetch the query to it. So that we are now concerned about physically sorting out the data on a relation for the query processing thing. Now the query processing will incur the cost of this sorting into the external cost on the renting. Now what do you mean by an external sort merge algorithm? The external sort merge algorithm will happen when there are all the data that is not in the memory or we cannot fit the data into the memory. It is already in the disk. Now when we are transferring the data from the disk into the memory, if we transfer it in a sorted way, then it will not only help us for having a sorted result as a relation, but also it will minimize the cost of the disk 6 and the block transfers onto this transfer of data. So now we will talk about that how an external sort merge algorithm happens and then we will see that the sort merge algorithm will minimize the cost of measurement in a query processing. So let us first define the algorithm for an, an external sort merge. Now in the step one, we will have the runs created to each other. That means there can be a several runs that we can create on an query or a particular data and then each of the run will be sorted without any relation to the actual part on this table. Now when we have the runs that is being sorted but there is a minimum relation or no relation to each other on this runs, we need to merge the runs so that we can achieve the sorted result in the desired output. Now how to create the runs? We will first see the program to create the runs. Now first to create the runs we need to read each of the blocks. Here we are considering the relation R is having an M number of blocks. So now we will read the M blocks into the relation R. Now we will take from this one option that either we will need all the M blocks to the relation R or the rest of the relation. Now initially we did not need to consider this one. We will see the use of this rest of relation in the next steps. Now after that we have written all this in blocks to the relation R. Now we need to sort in memory part of the relation R. That means each of the runs, each of the blocks that we have been reading it, then we need to sort this blocks along with it. Now this can happen that the blocks are no relation to each other, but we need to first select the blocks that is already in the in memory we have transferred. Then we need to sort the blocks that is an in memory part of the relation R. Now we need to write the data on the sorted files that is the R, that is the sorted part on this R relation to the run file Ri. 
So now we are writing it down that whatever we have sorted it down on this blocks on the in memory part, we will write it to the run file ri. Now see each of these merge passes or the pass on the runs that we are creating, we will have an external and explicit ri to store the sorted result. So it can happen that it will generate more ris in each of the passes. So now the run file ri will consist the sorted blocks on the relation r. Now we will increment our i to go to the next pass. Now we will perform the loop until and unless we have find the end of the relation r. Now see we will look at this second option. Now we are in the second step that some of the blocks are sorted down. Now we will read either the m that the number of blocks to the relation r if it is a no relational block that has been transferred from the disk to the in memory or other than that if some parted are already sorted then we will take the rest of the relation. So we will choose among these two whichever is the smaller one and then perform the again next all the sorting task and then again write the file to the run file on that particular parse that is R2. So as R0 has been supported now R1, R2 like this we will support till Rn until and unless we are finding all the runs. Now in the second stage we will create this margin that we have now blocks on that particular data sorted it down internally. Now we need to merge the data and again sort it down so that we can have the larger block or the larger number of runs. Now say suppose we have for the marching n number of runs that is less than n. That means the number of runs are less than the number of blocks. So now we can have the number of runs that is allocated to each of the block. So n will be allocated to each of this m also having at least one block for the output. As n is less than n, say suppose there are two number of runs and three number of blocks. So two runs will be allocated to blocks and the one block will be allocated to the output of the result. So now we need to create the number of runs to the number of blocks associated to it and then make the merging of it with the sorted data. Now first we will read each of the block on n that belongs to the file ri. Now we need to find the block into the buffer block bb. So here my bb is a buffer block so we are reading the first block of n in the file ri to the buffer block bb. Now we need to choose the first apple that is on the sorted basis in each of the blocks. So now when we are creating the runs we have the internal sorting on the blocks. So when we are having the sorted result on the blocks, we are selecting the first tuple of each of the blocks. Now in again match other sorting basis. Now we will perform that first tuple from this buffer block TN and this the BB on that particular TN. Now we need to again perform a sorting on this and then merge it to the larger block. The first we will write the sorted data that is the tuple to the output and then delete the tuple from that particular buffer block as it is already being written to the output. Now if any buffer block of the file ri is empty that means all the buffer block has been emptied and the output on the tuple has been written to the file op or the output file. And also it is not the end of the file. That means that there are more buffer blocks or more number of runs that is associated with R but one of the buffer block has been emptied. So now we need to copy from the next buffer blocks all the data without comparing directly it to the next output. So we will now copy this next block to the buffer block. Now we can have this buffer block again for the first tuple again compare it with the next buffer block and then write it to the tuple output delete it from the buffer block. Now we will perform this loop until and unless we found all the buffer blocks on the input sides are null or emptied. Now this external sort merge algorithm as it produces n merges or n runs on the merging process then it also known as an n way merge. Now we will solve a problem and see how this algorithm works on an n way merge problem. So this is the input block that we are having or the relation. Now we need to create runs on it. So there we are having 12 tuples in this one so we can have there can be four runs each of this contesting of three tuples as we are having that is three less than four that is n less than m. 
So now the four number of blocks each having n runs to it. Now we will create runs for each of the three data. So we will now partition three data and create four blocks with three runs. Now that we are having G24, A19 and D13. So if it is my key for the sorting, so now my runs that we are creating on the buffer blocks as in the first step that we have described, we will get a sorted block. So now it will be A19, D31 and G24. Now for the next one, it will consist B14, C33, and E16. This one will have D21, M3, R16. And the final one, A14, D7, P2. Now this is my March pass 1. So now we need to create the margin. That means the pass one will consist of margin of these two. So now in the second step that we have described, which will allocate each of the buffer block for each of the block. So this BB1, BB2, BB3, and BB4. Now we will take each of the tuples from the first relation and then join it to the next block. So now from these two, we will compare the first tuple that is A19 and B14. So now A19 is lesser than B14. So A19 will be by next run tuple on the buffer block that we will create. So now the first block we have A19 and from this tuple it will have B14. Like this two, it will have A14 and D21. So A14 is lesser than D21. So it will be A14, D21. In the second tuple, it will have D13 and C33. So C33, D31. Now that it is happening, why this first tuple of these two blocks? Because it is already in the sorted one. So there is no chance that the second tuple will be higher or lesser than this first tuple. Now the third one on the second one of the next pass is the M3 and D7. So we will have D7 and M3 to it. Now we will need to check that this D7 and D21, both of this value is happening. Now it need to change their order. So first it will store the seven and now it will store the 21. Because if there is any ordering on the same index values, then the second part of the sorting index it will take. Now the next one that is G24 and E16. So it will take E16 and G24. Now what happens is there are 16 and P2. So P2 are 16. So this is my runs on that second one, March pass one. Now we will create our March pass two as the final margin. Why we'll have this the final margin? Because now in this pass we will have all the buffer blocks that is associated and written to the output. Now let's check up again for the first tuple of these two that is A14 and A19. So here it will be A14 and A19. Next is B14 and D7. So it will obviously take B14. Now that it is B14 but the next one is C33. So we need to check that the C33 is less than D7 or not because it is already in the sorted order. So it will consist of C33, that is the last step of the second one, that we will empty up the data if there is any comparison that is lesser than the second one. Now it will have D31 to D7, so it will take D7. Again it will have D31 with D21, so it will have D21. Now it have D31 to M3, now it will have D31. Finally, it will have E16 with M3, so it will have E16. Now G24 with M3, that will have G24. Now we can see that this first block buffer is empty. 
So now we need to copy the rest of this one without comparing because it is already in the sorted order. So we have seen the three conditions for creating the runs, copying the data if there is any comparison. Now if there is any empty buffer, then copy all the data from the buffer to the final output. So here we can see that we have created from this one to this one as the final output on a sorted basis. Now, if there are more functions or the runs that is greater than m, we have taken that n lesser than m, but if there is n greater than m, then what will be the problem? We have to create m minus 1 by a reducing factor to it because will there be more blocks, we need to accommodate more disk 6 and block transfers. So our need is to reduce the number of blocks. So if we can reduce the number of blocks, that will it turn increase the number of runs to it. So in every pass, there will be more comparison, but lesser number of block transfer and seek time. Now, when we are having the query processing as the concern, then we need to have the lesser number of this block transfer and seek time. So as a result, we can reduce it the factor of m minus one to have the effort that we can accommodate the number of runs in m minus one blocks. So in this way, we can enhance our external sort merge algorithm other than having m blocks with the m minus 1 replacing to it. Now let us go to this cost analysis on the measurement of an external sort merge algorithm. Now what happens, we finally have all the rattles together into the first block that is the initial block. So the initial block and the final block will have the same number of tuples just in the sorted way. So in the initial one, we have M blocks and supported with a blocks of BR. So now the number of runs that we'll have is BR by M. Now that we have seen that the enhancement can run the decrement with a factor of M minus one. So the decrement factor can be M minus one. So now we can have the block transfers as, that is log of the decrement factor to the initial run. So it is a block transfer for each merge. Now as we have two blocks, that is two BR with the transfer rate, so the final block transfer for sorting, we will have two BR log M minus one BR by M, that is for each of the merges plus BR because the initial block transfer for getting the data from the disk into the memory. Now what happens for the problem that we have solved? We will have, so the initial block we have this 12th number of blocks as the data. Now with this, we have log m minus 1 br by m, that is m equals to 4, so the br by m log will generate nearly approx to 2 plus 1, that means 12 into 4 plus 1, 12 into 5, that is equals to 60 block transfers for this sorting. Now we will calculate the disk 6 for this sorting that we have done. Now for each run we have that BR divided by BB number of disk 6. So my total number of disk 6 will be Y2 into BR by M because BR by M is the number of initial runs, that is 2 into initial run. Though we can have all the runs that is accommodated to us. Next is the log m minus 1 br by m. Now for each run we have why this minus 1? Because the initial seek that is already happened not taken for the sorting. So now if we calculate, so my initial br was 12, so 12 by 3 that is 2 into 4 plus 12 into 4 minus one. So 44 number of disk 6 we will need for the sorting on the external sort merge algorithm. So this is the cost analysis of sorting on a query processing. That is all for today. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned with Ikira and subscribe to Ikira.